الحمد لله الحمد لله ثم الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبد الله ورسوله we praise Allah, we thank Allah, and we glorify Allah, and we bear witness individually and collectively in our hearts, with our tongues, in our minds, that there is no deity worthy of worship. There is no other God besides God Almighty, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, our Lord and our Creator and our Sustainer. And we declare with equal clarity that Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is his messenger and his servant and his guide for all of humanity. Amma ba'd. Today, I would like to speak to you about a characteristic that is emphasized in the revelation of the Qur'an that was revealed to the Prophet and to the Muslim community and to the world at large. Characteristic that is emphasized because it's an important element in achieving success, in ultimate success. In the call to prayer we just heard Hayal al Falah, come to success. Al Falah is, is success. Come to success. Prayer is one element in that. But what is it? What is this characteristic in the Quran? that is emphasized, that helped the early Muslim community and the Prophet وسلم, achieve his goals. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, أَمْ حَسِبْتُمْ بَعْدْ عَضُوا بِاللَّهِ مِنَ الشَّيْطَانَ الرَّجِيمِ أَمْ حَسِبْتُمْ أَنْ تَدْخُلُوا الْجَنَّةَ وَلَمَّا يَأْتِكُمْ مَثَلُوا الَّذِينَ خَلَوْا مِنْ قَبْلِكُمْ مَسَّتْهُمُ الْبَأْسَاءُ وَالْضَرَّاءُ وَزُلْزِلُوا حَتَّى يَقُولَ الرَّسُولُ وَالَّذِينَ آمَنُوا مَعَهُ مَتَى نَصْرُ اللَّهِ أَلَا إِنَّ نَصْرُ اللَّهِ قَرِيبٌ Do you think, in translation the verse reads, do you think that you will enter the garden of bliss, al-jannah, do you think you will enter that place when the example or the circumstances of those who passed before you has not yet reached you? In other words, you haven't faced the difficulties that have been faced by, by earlier generations and earlier communities? You think you're going to make it into gen, to Jannah, to Paradise without the struggle? In other words? They were afflicted, they were touched by suffering and adversity. They, were, they suffered, they endured all kinds of adversary to the point that this next verse, this next portion of the verse indicates it was such an extent that وَزُلْزِلُوا حَتَّى يَقُولَ الرَّسُولُ وَالَّذِينَ آمَنُوا مَعَهُ مَتَى نَصْرُ اللَّهِ To the point that the, the, the Messenger of Allah, the Prophet وسلم, and those who believed with him were shaken to the point where they were asking, when will the victory of Allah come? When will this difficult circumstance that they were facing be lifted? When will they find ease? And then the verse concludes with reassurance. Ala inna nasrullahi qareeb. Ala inna nasrullahi qareeb. Truly, the victory of God is near at hand. But what is this characteristic that's implied in this verse? Well, Allah says in many other verses explicitly what that characteristic is. بعد عوض بالله من الشيطان الرجيم In Surah 41, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says بعد عوض بالله من الشيطان الرجيم إن الذين قالوا ربنا الله ثم استقاموا ثم استقاموا That's correct. ثم استقاموا Those who, who say our Lord, our, our, uh, inna Rabbana Allahu, our Lord is Allah, our Lord is God Almighty. 
That's the first half of the formula. The second half, ثُمَّ Then, they were steadfast. And this is the topic of today's khutbah, to be steadfast. How is it that we can become steadfast in our faith, in our practice, in our character? How is it that we can grow in our consistency on that path towards Allah? For success is defined as small steps towards your goal. And as believers, our goal, all of us, is to Allah. As Allah reminds us in the Quran, Inna lillahi wa inna ilayhi raji'un. It's something when we say when someone passes away, but it's, it's not just a condolence. This is a, this is a motto for our life. We belong to God and to Him we are returning. Not we will return, we are returning. Wa inna ila rabbina yarji'un. Right? We are in the process of returning. So we are taking those steps. And our objective is, our goal is to take the steps that will lead us to Al-Jannah. To lead us to the pleasure of God. To, be, to do what is most pleasing to God. And not to be taking steps that will lead us astray or take us backwards, away from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Away from God Almighty. So, how is it that we can proceed and become more consistent? Well, the first thing that that verse, the first verse that I read indicated that people before us were afflicted with hardship and adversity. So let us examine just for a moment some of the, in, a, in general terms, in macro terms, the predicament of the Prophet wasallam, the Prophet Muhammad wasallam. He was an individual, one person in, a, in, a, in, a, in an entire society that was predicated on the worshipping of false gods. The entire society, that was the atmosphere, the environment into which he was, he was born. One man was charged with, an, with a tremendous mission to transform society. Not to battle society or to conquer society, to transform society, to change society from the, the direction that it was going, which was not in the right direction, to a direction that's more healthy, that's more in line with what will help that community achieve success, not only in this world, but the ultimate success, the success of one's character, one's soul, and the felicity one has when they return to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the hereafter. So imagine, one person charged with such a large responsibility, it's no, it's no wonder that his initial reaction was shock. He trembled. He doubted. Allah reassured him. وَالضُحَى وَاللَّيْلِ إِذَا سَجَى مَا وَدَّعَكَ رَبُّكَ وَمَا قَلَى By the early morning light, and the night, as it subsides, your Lord has not forsaken you, nor is He angry with you. He is reassured by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The Qur'an, the revelation that was sent, was helping him to cope with the tremendous responsibility that lay before him. And he received the Qur'an with open heart, with an openness. He felt the responsibility, he realized he needed assistance, and he turned to Allah for that assistance, and Allah sustained him in his mission through support of the revelation and through reassurance and support through some followers of his. From very early on, his wife supported him, Khadija, السلام, and his cousin Ali, his friend Abu Bakr, all of these individuals gave him support. But it wasn't enough for him just to have those people who knew him well and were his supporters to follow him. His mission was bigger than that. It was to transform the whole society. What was the first steps that he took? The first steps that he took was to himself fully embody the message of the Qur'an. He had always been a monotheist. But the Qur'an wasn't just about monotheism. 
It was about being kind to the, to the orphan. It was about being, uh, maintaining family relations. It was about being generous, about speaking words of beauty, about not holding hatred towards your fellow human being, about being honest in business. He embodied them, those characteristics, those qualities of the message himself. But then he continued to reach out to those who found resonance in his message. He trained them. He taught them. They absorbed the message of the Qur'an and they grew and strengthened in their faith. It was through education, through training, that the core group of believers begin to strengthen themselves and begin to attract more people to the message of truth. The, gru the group was very small and for 13 years he stayed in Mecca. 13 years he stayed in Mecca, m overwhelming majority of the leadership of Mecca and the people of Mecca did not support him, did not follow him. But he was not dissuaded. He was not shaken in his faith. He was persistent. He endured boycotts. They, all the Muslims at one point were ostracized from Mecca. They were, there was a boycott against them and they, no one was allowed to do business with them, marry into them, provide them food. They endured this. They endured this persecution. Some were tortured. Some were killed. He sent them, a group of them at one point to Habasha to Ethiopia to seek refuge under a Christian king who was just and who recognized the source, the same source of the Islamic message as that of the Christian message and gave sanctuary to the believers. But the Prophet وسلم, was consistent. He was, you know, everyone knows the story where they attempted to, to silence him through bribes and through compromise in his message. But he was persistent. Eventually, he realized, as an individual, we always often, or we oftentimes attribute the life of the Prophet, you know, all of his efforts that, he's, that he went through, all of this was divinely ordained, and the Prophet really just went along with it. He didn't really exert his own efforts in determining the direction or the course for the community. But what, what the Quran teaches us, teaches us is that he is an example for us to learn from. He's an example in that he tried to figure out the direction for his community that would help it to become established and to grow and to be successful and the message to be clear. Now, it's not too dissimilar from our times. His message that he was teaching was distorted. It was distorted by the mainstream of his time. People would make up all kinds of lies about him and his message. They would call him names, say that he's crazy, say that he's a magician, say that he's a soothsayer. He persisted. He let his actions, his character, and that of the community of believers speak for itself. And he persisted. Istiqama. He persisted. And eventually, despite the attempts of the Quraysh to prevent other Arab tribes from the Arabian Peninsula from learning or hearing his message. They put people on the outskirts of Mecca tell, warning people, stay away from Muhammad. He'll cast a spell over you. His words are magical. Just stay away from him. They, re they, they resorted to this message because they realized that the message of the Quran, the language of the Quran was so beautiful and so eloquent and so coherent, it wasn't crazy, it wasn't absurd, and it was truly powerful. And so the only thing that they could do to prevent people from being influenced by his message was to tell them to stay away from Muhammad, be, be, be afraid of him, be scared of him. Now some people had heard of his message, and when they came to uh, Mecca, those people in the outskirts that would warn people, stay away from him, he's there. 
Some of them appreciated those warners because they could find him more easily. Their warning saying, stay away from him, he's there, led them directly to him. And as we know, the two warring factions of the village north of Mecca, known as Al-Yathrib, in which the Aus and the Khazraj had been fighting for generations and feuding, they, they were looking for a peacemaker and they understood through the words that had come to them from the Prophet Muhammad wasallam that he was a true peacemaker. That he was a true peacemaker because the entire time in Mecca, he never raised a hand against the Meccans. He never encouraged his followers to raise a hand against the Meccans. He remained calm and cool and collected. They wanted a peacemaker and they enticed him to come. They invited him to come and reconcile between the two of them. And this is of course at the Oath of Aqaba and there were a couple of meetings before that as well. But he went there. This was through his efforts and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as aided him, of course, and assisted him, of course, but you can see in his attempts to figure out what was best for him and his community, other um, attempts that failed. The Prophet failed in several other attempts. He went to Ta'if, a nearby village, and he was hoping to find refuge before the opportunity in Yathrib came up, which later became known as al Madina, of course. But he went to the nearby village of Ta'if, and he wanted to see if they would be more receptive to the message. Maybe the community of believers could go there and find refuge there and the, the religion of Islam could take root in a place that wasn't hostile. But as soon as he got there, word had spread that he was coming and before he even got a chance to open his mouth, he was pelted and driven away. He was pelted with stones and driven away by the, by the uh, children of the community who were sent by their parents and by the slaves and by other parts of the community. They, they really, they beat him up with stones and he ran away bloody and bruised. It was his attempt, his effort, he's looking. How can I find a safe, secure place for my community to grow, for the message to take root, for me to help the community understand the reality of their own lives, their circumstances, and of God Almighty, and what would truly help the community achieve success. Let us reflect upon his example and the hardship that he went to and let us to learn from that example for our own time and let us to ask Allah to, to assist us in being steadfast. إن الله وملائكته يصلون على النبي يا أيها الذين آمنوا صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما اللهم صل على محمد وعلى آله. Today, in our circumstance, we are not a handful. We are not a small number. But in relative terms, we are a small fraction of the community in which we live. The dominant culture of our community is not one of monotheism or at least not one of faith in God as we understand it in Islam. The one God, the true God, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And we face a huge challenge because all of us as believers inherited the mission of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. We inherited his mission and his responsibility. We have to ask ourselves how is it that we can carry on this mission in our community here in our day and age? As many of you know, we have an opportunity. We have an opportunity to, an opportunity to expand our footprint here in Los Angeles. To expand our services here in Los Angeles. The property next door is for sale. It's for sale for $8 million, give or take. It's a bid, but we're, that's the estimate that we're understanding it to be for sale for. And so, this is an opportunity for us to be steadfast and to think strategically as the Prophet did. Would it be in our best interest to expand 
expand not only our physical location, but our services through this location, to maybe have a branch of the Ummah Clinic here, where we can serve the needs of the community, to have a youth facility, to serve that of our own youth, but also of the neighboring youth, <coughs> to raise our profile, to have an uh, education center for the, for the neighborhood, to really be of service to our community so that people can know us for who we are in our own words and through our own actions. Gathering on Friday is a blessing. For as Muslims, we believe that Islam is not an individual spiritual path, but a collective spiritual path. We need to come together and support one another and reassure one another in our faith and in encourage one another to do what is right. We all know the short surah, Surah Al-Asr, وَالْعَصْفِ إِنَّ الْإِنسَانَ لَفِي خُسْرِ by time through the ages, human beings are at a loss. إِلَّا الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا وَعَمِلُوا الصَّالِحَاتِ Except for those who believe and do good deeds. And what in particular is emphasized, as I started out the khutbah with? وَتَوَاسَوْ بِالْحَقِّ وَتَوَاسَوْ بِالصَّبْرِ And encourage one another to be truthful, and encourage one another to be patient, to be steadfast. And gathering together, and having a place to gather together that can accommodate us all, that we can meet and greet people from all different backgrounds and, and get to know ourselves through knowing each other. This is a true blessing and this is one of the steps that we can take that will lead us further along, inshallah, on the path to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, to God Almighty, on the Day of Judgment. We have four million dollars pledged already. Halfway there. We need your support. And I know the times are difficult and the economy is difficult, and that's why we're that's why the market value of the place is as low as it is, because if it was two years ago it would be twice as much. So this is an opportunity for our community. Let us come together, let us make a, a commitment to work. We have a very limited window of opportunity to move on this property and we, I'm asking for all of us to dig deep and to make a deep uh, a pledge that you will be able to make good on within in less than a month. So don't pledge something that you, it would take a year for you to, to commit to or to be able to fulfill. But commit what you can pay in within, a, within 30 days so that we'll inc increase our chances of being successful, of expanding our community there's 195 parking spaces there. We'll have parking. That alone is worth the investment. But there's also the opportunity to grow in our services and in our message, in our voice. Let us ask all of us, Allah, for assistance in our individual lives and in our collective lives. O oh Allah, you are our Lord, our creator, and our sustainer. Hear our call. Answer our prayer. Forgive us for our shortcomings. Guide our footsteps. Let us to be steadfast in what we do that is good. O oh Allah, let us to change our ways in what we do that is not so good. O oh Allah, forgive us for our shortcomings. O oh Allah, bestow your light upon us and let your light reflect through us to all of those around us. O oh Allah, we ask you to bestow your mercy and blessings upon the Prophet Muhammad the Prophet Jesus, the Prophet Moses, the Prophet Ibrahim, the Prophet Noah, the Prophet Abraham and all of your prophets, our Lord, we ask you and we call upon you for you have promised us that you hear the call of those who, who call upon you whenever they call. وَأَقُولُ قَوْلِ هَذَا وَاسْتَغْفِرُ اللَّهَ لِي وَلَكُمْ أَقِنَ الصَّلَاةِ إِنَّ الصَّلَاةَ تَنْفَعَ عَنَ الشَّحْ تَنْهَا عَنَ الْفَحْشَاءِ وَالْمُنْكَرِ